or when I say I'm a space scientist, usually people think, oh, you're a rocket scientist, that's way above our head. Well, yes, I mean, technically I'm a rocket scientist because I have uh, degrees in aerospace engineering. However, this is the entire International Space Station above Earth right now. If you look at it, it's not just aerospace engineering. All the different kinds of engineering has to fall through it. It's a very well collaborated, very well choreographed symphony that has to come together to make space possible. You have mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, robotics. You have manufacturing engineering to actually put everything in this together. And if you, you would appreciate that this entire space station was actually put together on orbit by astronauts and cosmonauts. This was not something that was built here and then launched into uh, uh, space. And you have electronics and communication and computer engineering, nothing. I mean, if we fail or code fails, we're done deal. So it's not just aerospace engineering. Now, when you actually put people in that, it's a completely different story. As you can see here, uh, that's an astronaut who recently came back. She lived on board for six months on the International Space Station. You have life support systems, you have medicine, biomedical equipment, environmental control for temperature, pressures, everything. And I'll talk more about what it actually takes to send humans into space. And of course, we also need to know how to wash our hair in space. And that's what she's demonstrating there. It's very difficult. And as humans, we are actually very needy. It's easy to uh, send computer uh, electronic equipment, any kind of avionics into space, cargo. But when we, when we are in the loop, it's very difficult. And hence, I'd like actually you guys to interact with me to tell me why it's, why is it hard to explore space? Can anybody tell me? And I'll promise I'll give you some space souvenirs to whoever answers. Anybody can tell me why is it hard to explore space? We can't breathe. We can't breathe. What are some of the things? No gravity. You got you watch gravity movie? Yeah. Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. No gravity. Good. High pressure. High pressure or no pressure? No pressure. No pressure. It's a vacuum. So you go in space and your body would explode. And uh, we have a doctor here too. He can uh, attest to whatever I'm saying. So your body would explode. Um, of, uh, because of vacuum. Anything else? Very important. Black holes. Well, black holes, that's just an out there, but hold on to that. It's expensive. It's expensive to actually launch something into space because it takes a lot of uh, energy to actually escape gravity. So it's expensive because of gravity. You're missing something important. Well, pressure was the most important. There's no atmosphere, no pressure, no atmosphere. So anytime we have to send humans into space, we have to supply them with food, water. Yeah, food, water, oxygen, right? You have to, how are we going to carry all of them? And so there's so many, including radiation. Guys, on a day-to-day -day basis, for one year on Earth, because we have the atmosphere, we still incorporate, we take about four to five x-ray equivalent radiation dosage on Earth. And astronauts take those four to five x-ray radiation dosage within seven days that they're in space. And there's a lot of musculoskeletal degradation that's going on. Uh, we had doctors talk before. You guys know about osteoporosis and arthritis. We do not have gravity. Everything runs around gravity. We do not have gravity on space. And so our muscles and bones get weak and there's no stimulus for it to grow. So we age. All the astronauts who come back, including our very own Sunita Williams and Kalpana Shabla, they, they go into rehabilitation uh, because they lose bone and muscle density. So there's a lot, lot of things when you put it together. It's very, very hard to uh, send humans and into space and explore space. 